Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, the new head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers, reigning national champion as a Michigan man and a Michigan Wolverines head coach last season, Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, yeah, coach! Coach. Thank you, Pat. You're the man, dude. Hey, listen. You are the – hey, Jim. Yeah. Thank you for being the human you are and representing football the way that you do, Jim. Genuinely. I've gotten a chance to learn a lot about you over this last year, these last couple months more specifically with the college football playoff, and then you getting back into the NFL. You are everything that is great with football, Jim. I just want you to know that before we start this conversation. Well, uh, appreciate those kind words and uh, just humble, hungry. Ready to attack. Yeah, and that seems to be the message for every press conference you have. Attack and dominate the day. And you gave a shout-out to your dad and your mom. Football is, you, I think you, you described it as, like, uh, you play, you coach, then you die. At what point did you realize that? Was that, like, whenever you were, like, eight, nine years old? Or when did you know this was going to be your life as a whole? Uh, six. Six years old. Uh, it was when I was uh, – in kindergarten, we were taking a bus to uh, to school, and I remember getting off the bus uh, one school day and pretending I was a, a football player, getting off the bus to to go into the stadium. And I, I think that's when it hit me. It's like this is this is definitely what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to play as long as I can, then I'm going to coach, you know, and then then eventually die. I remember having that 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 thought at six years old. Hey, there's a chance you're never going to die, by the way, with modern technology and your work ethic. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> Go ahead, AJ. Coach, what was that transition like from a player to a coach? I know I think you were working for your dad's staff at Western Kentucky while you were still playing, but was that a tough transition going from player to coach? Yeah, I, I think it took um, took about one year to get uh, up to speed. Uh, definitely the the – Playing football, I mean, there was an advantage. That's what I had been doing, you know, uh, up until that point, like 20 years, college plus plus as a pro player, five as a college, 15 as a, a pro football player. Mm. But uh, yeah, to really be a coach, uh, you know, every day working uh, uh, at the Oakland Raiders, uh, Bill Callahan was the head coach, uh, Al Davis, the owner. Um, two years there, uh, you know, felt like four um, you know, just cause there was, there was so much work to do. And I was really low on the, on the totem pole, uh, quality control coach, uh, breaking down the tape, drawing the pictures, uh, you know, really learning mentors like Mark Tressman, uh, you know, Bill J Norvell, uh, you know, all these, all these, all these great guys, uh, uh, you know, especially Mr. Davis. I mean, watching every, every, every play, every tape, he would, Sometimes I mean I, I have I have so many great stories. Of, uh, I, I was running the scout team at one point, and uh, you know he called me and uh, he was watching the tape and noticed that we had you know twelve in the huddle. Uh, I mean, wow! I mean, this is uh, you know there's a there's a just a level of of detail uh, when you're a coach that uh, I had to learn had to learn the technology. But yeah, one year I would I would say to any any player, uh, you know they're gonna you're gonna you're going to really lean on that uh, playing career because you know it. You know how to do it. Um, you know you can put your body in those in those positions uh, and, and visualize it, and then uh, be able to to explain and teach to a player. Probably takes about a year to get up to up to speed. Yeah, and that year uh, with the Raiders, I assume if it's anything like anybody else's quality control time, you're getting coffee, you're fixing the, uh, I don't even know if there's a printer, no offense, I don't know, fax machines back, yep. back then, uh, everything like that. That is a very low on the totem pole job. you got to earn your stripes in the coaching business. And you said in the press conference yesterday that when you went and took the USD job after, as a Chargers player, going and seeing it and telling them, if you ever need a head coach, when I'm done, I would love to be the head coach, you said in the press yeah. conference yesterday there's a story with Al Davis whenever you told him you were going to go be the head coach of Al Davis did he call you crazy did he say what are you doing was he pumped about you going and doing that and getting a chance to see you and quarterback from USD uh Josh, Josh Johnson Josh Johnson, Josh Johnson, yeah. Josh Johnson Josh the other Johnson. the other day before the game was a beautiful thing yeah. kind of a full circle moment for your career I think as we looked on but was what was Al Davis's thoughts whenever you got the head job at USD and you left the Raiders yeah, so uh, you know, Mr. Davis. I mean, probably a couple other stories before that, but um, you know, you really had to think out how, how you were going to say something, what you were going to say. Um, 
you know, it, it needed to be thought out because the man is such a visionary and, and just, I mean, off the charts, so much, so much more evolved than anybody I've ever met in football. Uh, but when I did go in to tell him, I said, you know, Mr. Davis, I, I, uh, I, I want to go be the head coach at University of San Diego. And he said to me, oh, I thought, you know, I thought we brought you here to be a head coach. I thought we brought you here to be an NFL coach. You know, why are you going there? So I had my answer thought out and I said, well, Mr. Davis, I've studied your career and I know you started as a college football coach and I wanted to emulate you and your career. And he said, yeah, but that was USC, not USD. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fan. Uh, why do you think now leading to that point and now Davis being a guy that's able to do that, not a lot of people have been able to coach both college and NFL. Not a lot of people have been able to relate to the players. Why do you think you've been able to have success? And what are the differences? And how long do you think it's going to take for you to get back into the I'm coaching adults mode? Or do you change it all for any of it? Well, it says a lot there. A lot, a lot of great uh, great things to think about. But, uh, I mean, there's been a lot that have. I mean, Jimmy Johnson, uh, Pete Carroll. Young, young in my career, uh, I remember Dave Adolph, uh, who was also uh, a coach that coached both college and pro. Uh, and I put Dave Adolph on the level of, of Jack Harbaugh and, and John Harbaugh, one of the greatest coaches of all time. That was uh, Dave. Um, you know, so many things I, so much I do in coaching is, is because of Dave Adolph and, and how he did it. Um, so I think there's, there, there are lots of, lots of coaches who can, who have done it and done it, done it very well. I mean, bottom line is, um, you know, there are no great coaches. There are no good coaches that don't have good players. Uh, so that, that's, that's the main thing. Uh, you know, uh, you need to either in to get better, you gotta, uh, you know, the players have to be better. You have to either, you know, draft them, sign them or coach them to be better. Those are the, those are the only, the only two things difference in, in college and, and pro players, um, really, uh, not that much different other than the pro players. I mean, they're, 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 uh, they're the best. I mean, they're the best college players. AJ, you know it. I mean, uh, if you get to the, if you get to be, become a pro player and make a pro, make a pro team, you're the best of the best. Uh, you were the most coachable in college. You worked the hardest. You were the most disciplined. Uh, it meant the most to you. And um, so, uh, you know, it's like you're breathing the same air. Um, and not that the college players aren't that. They just, you know, you just you just have to train them. Uh, you know, to get there and not all make it, you know, don't all don't have the talent and the, and the effort, uh, you know, to make it to that. But, you know, these guys are pros. I mean, they're, they're pros, pros. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's um, challenging because they've had good coaches in their past, you know, maybe they even had their freight favorite coach might've been their high school coach or their college coach. So, uh, you know, it's a level of, um, you know, what's, what goes through my mind right now is just, you know, you got to really bring it. I mean, I got to, I got to be good. You know, I got to be accountable. I got to be, uh, you know, walking into a room, uh, you know, coaching uh, Justin Herbert. Boy, I better, I better know my stuff. You know, I better have looked at all the tape. I better uh, uh, make this, uh, this system clean. And every time he steps out of a, a quarterback meeting, then, you know, he's got clarity, it's clean, concise. And then, uh, then he can go take it to the field. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a it's a big challenge. And right now, getting that getting that coaching staff, you know, put together, um, you know, just want an all star staff, want experts at each position, uh, you know, especially coaching the especially coaching the quarterback. But you know, every 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 spot, you know, there is no weak link. You're only as, as strong as your weakest link. I think is uh, is uh, is a is a pretty good uh, uh, you know realistic call it a cliche, but, uh, you know, truth, you know, facts. So, uh, you know, a lot, lot going on right now, Pat and, um, and AJ and, and I got to tell you this, that, that, inter that interview with, uh, you did with Tom Brady, uh, the other day. I mean, why are you watching about that Jim? Don't be watching that. Don't be Jim. You got other stuff. Don't be watching our dumb ass show. Jim, you, you're a good, <laughs> you said like, Oh, there's a lot of people that are right, good right, in no, college. That was, that, that was, that was, that was not dumbass. That was, uh, you know, that was, that was as real as it gets. And you, um, you know, you, you said some of the things I said, I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's no magic, uh, you know, recipes or secret, secret sauce formulas. I mean, it's hard work, uh, good old fashioned hard work and good old fashioned teamwork. And, 
and Tom laid it out as as well as it can be laid out. You know, work, team, uh, teamwork. That's what makes the dream work. Accountability. Uh, I mean that that interview you did with Tom. I mean that should be that should be content that every every young football player, college football player, pro football player studies. Jim. I mean, I'm mind blown right now that you even watched it and you said those very nice things. But, like, thank you, obviously. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. But, like, well, I, was, I was right there. I was right there with my 11 year old son, Jack. I watching this. I go, Jack, are you pay? Are you are you hearing this? Jack, this don't is- listen to this show, Jack. <laughs> Jack, this is a, a, that interview. But don't listen to the rest of the show. And I want to go back to the beginning of your answer there. Well, ar- archive that one, please. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Matt, we'll put a star on it. We'll send it over to you. We'll get the clip to the office. Uh, we've already seen that you've already done some upgrades at the Chargers facility. But what you said there at the beginning, you said there's a lot of guys that have been successful in college and in the NFL. You just went back like 60 years. There's like 10 people. You need to know that you're special, Jim. You are very. special. Special And that answer you just gave is a beautiful thing because I think that's what everybody wants from their coach. You're just having an ability to implement it and execute it at all levels. It's a beautiful thing. We're lucky you're here. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, John Harbaugh is another name. I got John Harbaugh started as a college coach, Miami of Ohio. Uh, uh, went to school there, Cincinnati, Moorhead State, oh, Indiana. He, he was very successful in both college and pro. Had a baby, John. The Harbaugh family can coach him up, no doubt. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, I know. So you, I know you play against your brother again this year. How do you, how do you guys game plan against each other? What is that like? Do you communicate during the week? Like, what, what are you gonna do? Like, do you already, you already have a game plan going in? Uh, I mean, the, now, now you're talking about. I mean, they, they one of the toughest uh, competitors uh, in every way. I mean, there's a, uh, you know, the great guy John Harbaugh. I know, the, I and you know the competitor. I know the edge. I know the. You know, just the, the sheer will. I mean, uh, and it, it just pulls it out of you. It pulls it out of you. You know, you got to be at uh, at your absolute best. You know, his his team's going to be uh, you know just tougher than heck to beat. And uh, so it's it's uh, yeah, that's it's it's it pulls it out of you. It's 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 one of those things that were uh, you know one of the great competitions. And it, it practically every I mean every team every team you play for play against in the NFL is is that way. Jim, let's talk about the teams that you've had in the NFL in the past. And I think a lot of people would say you were way ahead of time with the way you ran that San Francisco 49ers offense with everything that's happening out with RPOs. The college game is becoming the pro game, and it has been. But it feels like physicality has come all the way back in football. If we look at your Michigan team that just won a national championship, it was like, hey, that was a hard-nosed team. Remember, college was supposed to be wide open, Mm -hmm. we don't get to the quarterback, there's a lot of uh, uh, some confusion, misdirection, we're airing it out. Your team was just physical. That is, it was a obviously talented team in the waste room or out, you know, schemed and motioned and huddled and confused. It was a professional outfit, but it does feel like physical football is all the way back. Is one of the reasons why you took the Chargers job is because Herbert's able to play that particular style of football. And how much do you think your team is going to resemble what the Niners looked like back in the day when you were ahead of this curve when it came to NFL football? Oh, man, there's, there's, uh, that's so much great stuff there. I mean, it, it all goes back to the Vince Lombardi, right? I mean, football, blocking and tackling. Uh, and and there, was, uh, there was a time there in college football that um, – where yeah, it was it was getting you know, all this this wide open stuff and and and, and saw a real opportunity, some real low hanging fruit. Uh, what is if if they zig, we'll zag, you know, we'll, we'll be the the yin to their yang. I mean, we'll just come out and uh, you know get get a heck of a lot more physical. Um, and and things have, you know, you see it in in the, in the that's there's not that advantage currently in in pro football. I mean, every, everybody realizes you got to play defense. You got to got to be able to run the ball you better be able to play good up front uh and protect the quarterback you know you better be all out on on special teams so uh yeah i mean uh yeah there's there's not some there's not too much low-hanging fruit fruit right there i mean i see uh see that's 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 the pro game as for justin herbert there's no style of football that uh you know he doesn't he wouldn't he wouldn't excel at i mean and if you want to talk RPOs, if he was just going to be a running quarterback, he could he could he could be that you know a drop back pack pocket passer. I mean he he has got the potential to be the absolute best at that. Um, you know 
he could probably go play tight end and be a, be a Pro Bowl tight end. He's, kicker, uh, kicker. He can kick, coach. He can kick. <laughs> we got a pretty good kicker here right now. But yes, there's no question. I mean, he could be your punter. He could be your your uh, your your kicker. He would be a, a, a tremendous edge rusher. Uh, I mean, it's uh, that size. <laughs> yeah, that length. Uh, it. it um, yeah, but uh, yeah, quarterback. Uh, we know we 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 have a great one, and and I really was. You know, in that press conference yesterday, you know, really also just sending a message. I, you know, some that hopefully many heard it, um, which is, uh, you know, coaches, potential coaches here uh, for the Los Angeles Chargers. I mean, we have got to protect this this man, uh, his environment, both on the field, you know, uh, off the field, in the meeting room, and it's gonna it's gonna have to be uh, come here. I mean, you got to be. You got to be up for the challenge, you know, man enough to, you know, coach a talent like like Justin Herbert and and the rest of the team up front, you know, uh, offensive line. I mean, we're we're relying on. I mean, every position group relies on on the offensive line Uh, defensively. I mean, we got to be able to, you know, get teams stopped, uh, get get turnovers, get get field position, special teams. uh, You know, we're improving here. Uh, But, uh, yeah, run game, play action. uh, You know, we. We've got to we've got to attack it all and and uh, you know get really good get really good at football if we're going to accomplish the goals that that we want. Man, and John, our players want. Yeah, everybody seems to want over there. Justin Herbert, listening to you talk, by the way, and he's super quiet, humble, obviously, and I think people say he has a phenomenal personality and great work ethic. There's nothing but hearing your head coach though come in and be like, hey. This is what we need to build. We're lucky to have it. That's huge for him. You know that, though, right? Whenever you're saying it all. And is that always going to be a goal? Because Greenberg told us, Mike Greenberg told us a story that was like, yeah. uh, you're at a funeral, rest in peace, mm-hmm. to whoever mm-hmm. passed away. All right. All right. Great Ira Harris. Okay. This is the first time we we've learned about this. Rest in peace to uh, Ira, Ira Harris. Harris. Yes, sir. Moment of silence for Ira Harris. Great man. Moment has passed. Rest in peace. Okay, at that funeral, Mike Greenberg said that you guys started a conversation, and he said, unprompted, you came out and were just talking about Justin Herbert being, like, the next generation of what a football player is supposed to be. Like, absolute love affair with Justin Herbert. Obviously, you have a connection to the Spanos family and to the Chargers as you played there, but he was basically saying, while you were still in college, not even thinking about the NFL at this standpoint, but looking ahead at the NFL, you're like, Justin Herbert's guy, Justin Herbert's guy. After meeting him, talking to him, seeing him, obviously you looked up at him. Has that grown? What what has it been about Justin Herbert, and how has it been with Justin Herbert since meeting him here, since taking the head coaching job? Yeah, I mean, uh, and yeah, going back to that uh, time, I remember the conversation well with Greeny, and uh, you know, we were a lot. We were talking about uh, JJ McCarthy and what I thought of JJ McCarthy. I, you know, just think he's 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 tremendous, and I was comparing him to uh, you know some of the people I thought like uh, um, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. Um, uh, and you know some of the great quarterbacks uh, that are that are in the league, and um, and and de- definitely uh, you know we got off in on the Justin Herbert. It, it, there's no secret here, right? I mean, everybody everybody knows uh, you know how great of a player he is, right? I mean, you just just have to just have to just have to watch. And Lamar, those 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 four were the ones I was comparing uh, JJ to to at the at the time. But uh, yeah, there's a there's a there's another another level there with uh, with Justin Herbert that um, you know just gifted you know mom dad and God and uh, the way you see him you know like uh, some of the games he's played I mean it's just and tough and tough and you know um, you know people people hit Justin I you know you notice that and he just you know he just you know big hits and he's just down and then he's pops back up you know like you never see him complain about uh you know a late hit or anything it's like he just shrugs it off like it's 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 not even a not even an issue uh when he gets hit in the boundary or or, or late and uh you know maybe that's maybe he doesn't get some of the calls he should because he because he doesn't uh but you know some some of the fourth down pickups he he's he's made i mean the pressure situations yeah well that, that was the kind of conversation we were having uh with uh, with Greeny that day. So whenever you two, are, it feels like you said the ying to the yang. When people ying, we're gonna yang. When zig, we're gonna zag. Feels like you and Herbert 
I probably see football the same way, if I had to guess. And do you feel like it's a perfect fit? I feel like it is from outside looking in. Everything that Herbert potentially needs comes in the form of one coach who's a little bit more demanding, commanding, understands him potentially a little bit more. Do you feel like it's a perfect fit now that you've got to be around each other a little bit? Yeah, the, I do. I mean, uh, the organization, the Spanos family, um, everybody I've met here in the, in the organization uh, that wants to work, wants to win. I mean, our owner, Dean Spanos, is here every single day. He's like one of the first in the building and, and the last to leave. I think John Spanos is a star. I think we, uh, uh, Ed McGuire, who was here when I was here, really knows, nobody knows the cap better. Joe Ortiz, he just came on board the other night. Uh, and the players, Derwin James, I mentioned some of, you know, some of these guys I'm having conversations with that are, that are getting me fired up and inspired and um Keenan Allen. I mean, some of the guys that are best, Joey, Joey Bosa, uh, you know, back and forth talking to him, Khalil Mack, uh, Austin Eckler, um, meeting some of the, the offensive linemen, Zion jo- uh, Johnson just met him today. I mean, great looking guys walking through the door. Um, and, 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 and Justin, um, you know, I think, I think we do. I think we have a lot in common. I think we share uh, a very important asset um, of being relentless. Mm. Well, we have been relentless in an opportunity to potentially get a chance to chat with you on this program, and we are incredibly thankful you're back in the NFL and that you joined us today. Good luck with everything, and keep that shop vac going over there, Coach. Uh, Appreciate it. Hey, you're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Harbaugh.